sister lured my husband into cheating during my pregnancy, so I cut her off financially. Welcome to an extraordinary story. A narrative of resilience, betrayal, and newfound strength titled Triumph Over Betrayal, a woman's journey through pregnancy and beyond. This tale unfolds the life of a 34-year-old woman, recently embracing the joys and challenges of motherhood with her two-month-old daughter. Her journey, however, is not just about the transformation into motherhood, but also about navigating the turbulent waters of a changing marriage and confronting a profound betrayal. Her story begins on a note of unexpected surprise, a pregnancy that came right after their first anniversary. It wasn't in their immediate plans, yet it wasn't unwelcome. At that time, life seemed set on a promising path, both she and Paul. Her 37-year-old husband were doing well professionally, they had their own home, and were nurturing dreams for future ventures. Responsibilities were always part of their life equation. Paul was saving to buy a house for his parents, and she was investing in their joint aspirations. But to her, the pregnancy seemed like a serendipitous blessing perfectly timed in their life's journey. However, Paul's reaction to the news was a mix of subdued surprise and complex emotions, a harbinger of the changing dynamics in their relationship. As the months of pregnancy passed, the narrative of their marriage oscillated between warmth and aloofness. Paul's support during her pregnancy was a fluctuating tide, at times, he was the epitome of attentiveness and care. On other days, he was distant, his indifference casting a shadow over her days. The physical tribulations of pregnancy were manifold, nausea, headaches, indigestion, a relentless barrage that tested her endurance. Throughout this ordeal, Paul's inconsistent involvement left her feeling isolated and unsupported, starkly highlighting the contrasts in their relationship. Her independent nature, which had always been a source of pride, now became a point of contention, her solitary visits to the doctor a silent testament to the emotional distance that had crept into their marriage. But the true test of her strength came with a shocking revelation, a betrayal that cut deep into the fabric of her trust. Her own sister, in a bewildering act of disloyalty became the catalyst for her husband's infidelity during this vulnerable phase of her life. Faced with this unfathomable deceit, she made a bold and decisive choice to sever financial ties with her sister a move that symbolized her reclaiming of control, self-worth, and independence. This act was not just about financial disentanglement, it was a declaration of her resilience, a statement that she could, and would, rise above the pain and emerge stronger. This chapter of her life, rich with complexity and emotional depth, is a testament to the power of resilience in the face of betrayal. It's a story that speaks to the heart of struggle, the pain of deceit, and the triumphant journey of finding strength within. Her experience, laid bare in this narrative, is not just a personal chronicle, but a beacon of hope and empowerment for anyone who has faced the storms of betrayal and emerged stronger on the other side. When you confided in me about your struggles, I immediately empathized with your situation. Conversations with friends led you to a realization. The charming social media portrayals of perfect relationships had inadvertently heightened your expectations. Indeed, those adorable depictions of doting husbands caring for their pregnant wives had set a bar that seemed unattainable. You admirably endeavored to manage your mood swings, navigating through the pregnancy, and were ultimately blessed with a beautiful baby girl. However, your partner Paul's behavior post-birth has been concerning. While he joyously embraced fatherhood, interacting lovingly with your daughter, his demeanor towards you shifted to a colder tone. This change came at a time when you were grappling with the physical and emotional aftermath of childbirth, including painful labor and lingering postpartum depression. Despite your struggles, Paul's actions haven't matched his words of care, leaving you feeling unsupported and alone. Your attempts to address these issues with Paul have been met with denial and accusations of exaggerating the situation, which only amplifies your distress. The dismissive attitude towards your feelings, labeling them as mere mood swings or postpartum effects, fails to acknowledge the deeper underlying issues affecting your relationship. It's indeed a challenging journey, and your feelings are entirely valid. Major life transitions, such as welcoming a new baby, can significantly alter relationship dynamics. It's essential for Paul to truly understand the emotional burden you're shouldering and join you in seeking a harmonious resolution. You deserve empathy, support, and understanding during this transformative period in your life. Addressing a common query about infidelity, 
you clarify that suspicion naturally arises when a partner becomes distant. However, it's also crucial to consider other factors that might be influencing your husband's behavior. Understanding, open communication, and mutual support are key in navigating these complex emotional landscapes. I couldn't help but recall the peculiar way Paul had been acting towards me during my pregnancy. My doctor had strictly advised against any sexual activity due to certain complications. I initially suspected that this might be the reason for Paul's strange behavior. I questioned him multiple times if this was bothering him, and each time, he denied it, claiming it was a minor issue and that we were simply trying to ensure a healthy pregnancy. In fact, whenever I expressed my frustration about not being able to engage in sexual activity while observing other pregnant women enjoying their high libido Paul would console me, assuring me it was just a matter of a few months. Looking back, I'm astonished at how well he played his role. He acted concerned and considerate all along, all while secretly cheating on me. My gut feelings were right. As of late, I noticed Paul staying up late, engrossed in texting someone. His secretive behavior raised suspicions, such as guarding his phone, setting it on silent mode, and deliberately keeping the screen face down whenever I was near. I might not have paid much attention to these signs if I hadn't found him still awake at 3 o'clock a.m. one Friday night. We had both gone to bed at our usual time, but when our daughter woke up around 2.30 a.m., I fed and soothed her back to sleep. However, she refused to sleep in her crib, so I held her in my arms and lay down on our bed. Unbeknownst to Paul, who thought I was asleep, he discreetly retrieved his phone from under his pillow and began texting someone. He was facing away from me, and the phone's screen was visible to me. I briefly contemplated checking his messages to discover who he was communicating with but just then, my baby woke up again. Paul hastily concealed his phone under his blanket and pretended to be asleep. That moment left me deeply unsettled. The moment of realization hit me like a thunderbolt. No matter what my husband said, his actions were screaming that he was up to something secretive. I was determined not to confront him without concrete evidence. Our past conversations had circled around issues in our marriage, but never once did he admit that our marriage was crumbling. I knew that mere confrontation would lead nowhere. In the ensuing days, my resolve to uncover the truth led me to try and access his phone. But he guarded it like a treasure chest, keeping it so close that it was impossible for me to even lay a finger on it. He even took it with him to the bathroom, a habit he always had, under the guise of watching the news or playing music in the shower. Therefore, sneaking a look into his phone was out of the question, especially since I didn't know his password. Turning to the next plausible option, I considered our shared home computer. It was mainly used by Paul, and on one fortunate day when he was out, I stealthily logged in. To my dismay, but not surprise, he was logged into his email. The contents of his inbox were damning, a litany of his secret activities unfolded before my eyes. There were details of shopping sprees, presumably for gifts, exorbitant bills from fancy restaurants, and hotel check-in confirmations. However, the identity of his mistress was conspicuously absent. Even the hotel bookings were made solely under his name. In a desperate attempt, I tried contacting the hotels for details of any additional guests, but my efforts were in vain. Carrying the weight of this information, coupled with the responsibilities of motherhood and the multitude of other duties, was overwhelming. The situation was driving me to the brink, finding myself breaking down under the relentless pressure and emotional turmoil. An update to this heart-wrenching situation unfolded. The revelation of my husband's affair was even more shocking than I could have ever imagined. It involved my own sister, 12 years younger than me, whom I had always supported and cared for. Never in my wildest dreams had I thought she could betray me in such a way. The affair wasn't just a simple act of infidelity. It was a calculated seduction by my sister. I discovered through their chat history that while my husband was not innocent, he initially resisted her advances. This revelation left me in a state of disgust and betrayal, struggling to come to terms with the fact that my sister, someone I held so dear could be the architect of my deepest pain. A troubling realization dawned on me amidst the complexities of my pregnancy. This epiphany struck as I pondered over Paul's increasingly peculiar behavior. My doctor had firmly advised against any sexual activity during this delicate period due to certain medical complications. Initially, I suspected that this restriction might be the root of Paul's growing aloofness. 
I repeatedly confronted him, seeking to understand if this was the source of his apparent distress. Each time, his response was the same. He insisted it was irrelevant and that this temporary sacrifice was trivial compared to the health of our unborn child. Despite my frustrations over the situation, particularly when comparing it to other women's experiences of heightened libido during pregnancy, Paul always had a way of reassuring me. He emphasized that it was a brief phase in the grander scheme of things. My suspicions deepened as I observed more unsettling changes in Paul's behavior. His nights were increasingly consumed by secretive texting sessions. His phone had become an object of mystery, always in silent mode, meticulously guarded, and deliberately placed with the screen facing down whenever I was near. These habits might have slipped past me under normal circumstances, but one incident in particular sharpened my awareness. It was a Friday night, typical in all respects until the unexpected happened. Our daughter woke up around 2.30 a.m., disrupting the stillness of the night. After attending to her needs and struggling to settle her back in her crib, I ended up cradling her in my arms, lying awake in bed. It was then that Paul, perhaps mistakenly assuming that I had fallen back to sleep, subtly retrieved his phone from beneath his pillow and began engaging in a hushed texting spree. His body was turned away, shielding the phone's screen from direct view, yet I could sense the urgency in his actions. I was torn between the desire to confront him and see who was on the other end of the line, and the need to tend to our stirring baby. Just as I was about to act, our daughter's restlessness peaked and Paul, caught off guard, quickly stashed his phone away, feigning sleep. It was in this moment, under the dim glow of the nightlight, that the seeds of doubt firmly took root in my mind. The once unquestionable trust I had in Paul was now shrouded in uncertainty and suspicion, marking the beginning of a challenging journey towards uncovering the truth. In this harrowing chapter of my life, my mother's trust in me stood out starkly. She knew me well enough to understand that I wouldn't unjustly harm anyone. After meticulously gathering the evidence, I made no effort to hide my investigative tracks. It was important for me to let her know that her cunning ways were not beyond my perception. Returning home, I delved into the thousands of messages exchanged between them. It became clear that my sister had set her sights on Paul from the very beginning of our marriage. It started innocently enough, with humorous reels, which then escalated to flirty and eventually seductive exchanges. I saw that initially, Paul's responses were non-committal, often just laugh or heart emeticons to her videos. However, the dynamic shifted alarmingly during my pregnancy, especially after my doctor advised against sexual activity. Naively, I had shared this personal detail with my sister, not realizing she would exploit this situation. Her messages to Paul increased, replete with memes and photos, subtly suggesting he was deprived during my pregnancy. What started as innocuous pictures and new outfits soon morphed into bold, revealing images, a calculated move to gauge Paul's reaction. When he didn't disclose these interactions to me, she grew bolder. This was a meticulously orchestrated trap, and when they were fully entangled, I found messages where Paul expressed fear of ruining our marriage and asked her to stop. But these late expressions of remorse couldn't excuse his betrayal. There were countless moments he could have halted this deceit, but he didn't. Yet, in this web of betrayal, the sting from my sister's actions cut deeper. I had promised her, amidst family teases after my daughter's birth, that my love for her would remain unchanged. Now, that love had turned to hate. The day after my discovery, she bombarded my phone with calls, followed shortly by a call from Paul, which I ignored. Paul arrived home within the hour, not with his usual defensiveness but with a resigned acknowledgement of his wrongdoing. He tried to justify his actions, claiming resistance at first but eventually succumbing, citing it was too late to inform me of her advances. I responded with silence, my only request being for him to call her. I wanted to hear her explanation, to understand her motives. My parents were also called over. Before addressing the situation, I deliberately took time to put my daughter to sleep prolonging the anticipation. My parents sensed the tension heightened by my mother's earlier observation of my activities in that woman's room. As I stepped outside to confront her, the weight of betrayal and deceit hung heavily in the air. The moment was charged with raw emotion and revelation. My sister, amidst tears, could only muster apologies, labeling her actions as a grave mistake. My parents, bewildered, questioned the unfolding drama. I deflected, urging them to seek the truth from her. 
It was time for her to voice the full extent of her betrayal, starting from the very acts of seduction. This was a moment of humiliation for her, but for me, it was a semblance of justice. After enduring the strains in my relationship for so long, it was now her turn to confront the pain she had inflicted. Her confessions turned more startling. She admitted her attraction to Paul, motivated not just by his demeanor but also by his financial security. Her words were laced with envy and a desire to claim my lifestyle, including my husband. She declared her intentions to break free from my financial support, her words a mix of defiance and bitterness. My mother, unable to contain her shock, reacted strongly, yet my sister persisted in her narrative, expressing her disdain for having to rely on me financially despite it being her only option. As the clock ticked to 1313, the tension in the room escalated. I stood unwavering, demanding my parents to remove her from my sight, renouncing her as my sister. This decision was not taken lightly. I was resolute in cutting off all support, including for her master's course, which I had been funding. Her lack of employment heightened my parents' worries, as they foresaw the financial responsibilities falling onto their shoulders. The situation reached a fever pitch. Despite my parents' attempts to broker peace, the sight of her only fueled my anger. I made it clear she had to leave, my words leaving no room for reconciliation. After they left, Paul tried to justify his actions, but his excuses fell on deaf ears. To me, his infidelity was unforgivable. I instructed him to leave our home and prepare for an impending divorce. His efforts to sway me were futile. As he packed his belongings, a definitive line was drawn. I refused his last request to hold our baby, a final assertion of the boundaries that his betrayal had necessitated. In the aftermath, as the house emptied of his presence, the echoes of our once shared dreams lingered, now replaced by the stark reality of a life-altering decision. The resolve in my actions was fueled by the deep sense of betrayal and the necessity to protect what was most precious to me. In the wake of this heart-wrenching revelation, the realization of Paul's indifference towards our daughter both during her time in the womb and after her birth was painfully clear. I was resolute in not allowing him to feign regret or sorrow in the aftermath. My mother arrived that evening, her presence intended as emotional support. Yet, her words only added to my turmoil. She was distraught over my decision to evict Paul from our home and pursue a divorce. Her plea for me to reconsider, citing my sister's seduction and Paul's initial resistance, fell on deaf ears. I firmly reiterated to my mother that, regardless of his initial hesitance, Paul ultimately succumbed to the temptation. He had multiple opportunities to come clean to me, but he chose silence. This excuse held no weight for me, especially in my current state of distress. This confrontation with the harsh reality of my marriage and my sister's betrayal occurred just two days ago. Since then, my mother has been staying with me, trying to provide solace in my mental anguish. However, my mind is firmly set on the divorce, eagerly awaiting the arrival of the divorce papers to officially remove Paul from my life. My sister, in her greed to possess everything I had, would soon realize that she would lose much more than she had bargained for. Hearing about your situation is deeply saddening. Your decision to cut ties with your sister and file for divorce is a testament to your strength and determination to uphold your dignity. I am overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and support from the community. It has bolstered my mental state significantly compared to the past year. The divorce proceedings took 20 days to initiate, resulting in my gaining full custody of my daughter a decision that was unquestionably mine. The house, where we had lived and to which I had contributed more than half of the mortgage payments, became solely mine. I did not seek alimony, as my primary objective was to dissociate from Paul and ensure he had no part in our daughter's life or our home. This, to me, was retribution enough. Our plans to leave our jobs and start a new venture together were now just remnants of a past life. Fortunately, the savings for this venture, which I had been diligently accumulating, were not in our joint account. Paul had his separate savings for his parents' house, a venture now shrouded in uncertainty given his current predicaments. In an ironic twist, my sister, who had believed Paul to be more financially stable than me and had pursued him to access what she thought was his wealth, was left disillusioned. Her plan to eliminate me as the middleman and directly benefit from Paul's supposed affluence backfired spectacularly. When Paul discovered her true motives, he was quick to distance himself, leaving her aspirations unfulfilled and her expectations shattered. 
The atmosphere was charged with tension and resolve. I found myself irrevocably distanced from my sister, her actions rendering any reconciliation impossible. My parents attempted to persuade me to reconsider cutting off financial support, especially for her master's program. However, my stance was firm. I pointed out that having funded her college education, she was now a graduate and fully capable of supporting herself be it through employment or financing her further studies. My parents didn't press the issue further. As for my sister, she vanished from my life. And I made sure of it by blocking her on social media, ensuring her image wouldn't unexpectedly appear and reopen old wounds. I learned through my mother that they had set an ultimatum for my sister to find employment, no longer willing to indulge her expensive tastes. I was relieved they took this stance. It was time she learned the value of money. Regarding Paul, our paths diverged completely. During the divorce, he moved in with his parents. His mother occasionally reaches out, maintaining a cordial relationship for the sake of my daughter. I respond positively to her inquiries. She has always treated me kindly, and I see no reason to involve her in our estrangement. Life had settled into a new rhythm, focused on my daughter. Her attempts to speak, albeit in gibberish, never ceased to amaze me. I cherish each of her developmental milestones, finding joy amidst the chaos. As my maternity leave draws to a close, I've managed to secure an extension, giving me more time to arrange for a nanny for my daughter. This next step is daunting, yet I feel equipped to navigate it, confident in our ability to thrive in this new chapter of our lives. I reflected on the journey so far. My financial independence and prudent decisions regarding savings and joint accounts have laid a solid foundation for a secure future for both me and my daughter. I find solace in the small, beautiful moments with her, which overshadow any past bitterness. Balancing work and motherhood is no easy feat, but I'm fortified by a positive outlook and unwavering determination. The story comes to a close. Thank you for joining me today. Before we part, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more stories like this. Your insights on today's content are always welcome. See you soon. What do you all think about this situation? Have you experienced something similar? Feel free to share your stories in the comments below. Thanks for tuning into our space today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and make sure you ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Looking forward to seeing you next time.